Fellowship uh, Ministries. And so we have our annual conference that's going to be taking place in July. And so we want to invite you to be a part of that. It's going to be an amazing time. Some, an excellent lineup of great speakers, international speakers. And it's a, a very, very special time. Uh, there's something that happens in conference that is very, very powerful. So if you are able to go, whether it's, it starts on a Tuesday through Friday, if, you're, if you can't make the whole week, understandable, but if you can go uh, one of the days, it'll be great. And so uh, we'll be there uh, um, August 12th, 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 I mean August, July, July 13th, I'm sorry guys, July 13th to the 15th. All right, we're in church today. Okay, so, <laughs> excuse me. Then, um, I guess that is today's announcements. Today we're not going to have children's ministry. I'm just kidding. Bye, guys. We're going to have them dismiss them. I told one of the kids, no Sunday school today. Yes, there is. I go, yes. Yeah, there is. I said, okay. All right. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you today here in the house of God, ready to hear from God. I'm excited about today. Oh, that's right. We just came back from Mexico. I had something for you guys. Uh, man, we had such an amazing time in Mexico. We were able to fly down there in, um, a few days ago and be there for a few services with the, with the church in Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico. And then also we got to visit the church in Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Uh, the two pastors there, they're just doing a great job. And so... Um, what I did, I just I took some photos, a couple little videos and stuff like that, and I just have a very short video. I created really quick. I was actually, as a matter of fact, I was creating it on the plane when I was on the plane. Just started messing with it. I said, okay, we need to have something for Sunday. But before we show it, I want to thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, I was able to go to Mexico. Uh, Brother Marcus joined me. Today he's not here. He's feeling a little under the weather. And um, thank you because of your offerings, and we, we were able to bless the church in Ensenada. Yes. We blessed them financially, and then we blessed them as we were there. And also the, the church in Tijuana, we did the same thing. We were able to bless them financially as well um, because the needs in Mexico are great. The economy is terrible. And, uh, I mean, so, uh, so whatever we gave them made a big impact, okay? So I have a very short video, so if we can hit the lights and uh, go, ahead, go ahead and shoot the video. Right, so that is Mexico. TJ and Ensenada, uh, they send their greetings. They're very, very thankful for uh, your investment that we were able to go and minister. 
Uh, next year, we are preparing to go to Guadalajara, and so we will put the, the dates soon, so that way if you want to be a part of that, I mean, more the, the more the better, merrier, and so, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we encourage you to be a part of that. Okay, so if you have your Bibles today, the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30 Become a tree of life. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30. Um, there was a man that had lost hope. This man was already later in years. He had a son that was a, a wayward son, in other words, a son that was involved in criminal activity, in, crimi in a lifestyle that was hurting his father. And he had just given up hope. This father had given up hope on his son. He said, my son's already an adult, and all these years he's never listened to me. And so... He had just given up hope. Someone came alongside of him and began to speak some hope into his life and began to tell him, look, it's not over. It is not over. Things can change. God can do the impossible. This man just shared very few words, but it became a tree of life. For that man. It became a tree of hope. It became a tree of, of the future. Some kind of life into that. And as you find yourselves in the book of Proverbs in chapter 11 and in verse 30. What is it? Do I have it right? Yes, 1130. Um, the Bible says something like this. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Again, the fruit of the righteous is a, is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, my God, and we ask that you, Lord, would, would help us and that you would speak to us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. You and I are the righteous. You, you and I, those that have given their lives to Christ, you're the righteous. We, are, we're, we have righteousness in Christ. Amen? Thank God for that. Yes. So the Bible says that you are a tree of life. You're a tree of life. You're a tree of hope to others. From the beginning of time, when God created man, Adam and Eve, and he put them in the Garden of Eden. I was going to say the Garden of Eve. I said, that don't sound right. <laughs> the, 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 excuse me. The garden, the garden of Eden, and he said, there's two trees here. And one of those trees was the tree of life. The tree of life. Amen. And so today... As we're here today, God has called us to become trees of life. That's what God wants for your life, that you become a tree of life. Um, the Bible tells us that the, the righteous, we, pro, we produce works of life, fruit of life. Uh, the desire of God, God desires that, that you and I will produce works in life, uh, prove, uh, we produce uh, works that will impact other people's lives. Amen. God desires for you, amen, God desires for me that you, you produce works of hope that someone might come that may have lost hope on life and that you will produce hope 
in our lives. God desires that you produce fruits that will give life to others. Amen. That will give life to, you, to others. Amen. As we went to uh, Ensenada and Tijuana, um, yes, we went and we were able to not only uh, be a part of their services, but be able to impart life into people that might otherwise might have lost hope. And so God has called every single one of us today to do that. And that's what becoming a tree of life is all about. Um, and how do we do that? How is it that we're going to produce those works of life? How, we, how is it that we're going to be able to bring hope to someone else? How is it that you're going to produce some kind of uh, uh, impact in someone's life? Um, it has never, the, the desire of God has never been that we become church people. That has never been the desire of God. Amen. God has never intended for you and I to just come to church and enjoy church, which is okay, but that has never been God's plan. The plan of God is that He wants you to produce works that will give life to other people. And how is it that that happens? First of all, there's, I'm, I'm just going to go a little bit before I go into my points. Uh, any, any impact or any hope that we bring to anybody's life comes from God. It's not within ourselves. It's from God. Okay. It, is, it comes from God. Doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you feel about yourself. But if you're able to bring some kind of hope to someone's life, it comes from God, not us. Amen. It comes. Uh, somebody just told me this yesterday, Pastor. You know, I've been sick. I haven't been going to church. But there's people that they want me to just talk to them about the Lord. But I feel that I can't do it because I haven't been attending church because of my sickness. I go, no, you do it. Go, God. Remember, it's God in you that's doing that. Amen. Thank God for that. So I believe that God is speaking to you today. You have uh, maybe looked at your life and you said, man, you know what, I can't really make an impact on nobody, anybody's life. That's not true. God doesn't say that. The Bible says that you're a tree of life. Do you believe that you're a tree of life? Amen. Amen. Okay. So it is God that does it. It's the Spirit of God that does it. Uh, what does he do? He brings help to people. He, he's the one that brings help to people. And all that God needs is people. God is the one that helps the brokenhearted. God is the one that helps the addicted. God uh, um, helps. God through his power, is able to help those that are suicidal. God is able to help those that have lost hope in life. God is able to help the ones that have just maybe in their lives just um, given up. God wants to do that. Amen. But what he needs is people Amen. to use. We are the tools that God uses, we are the channels that God uses, we are the instruments that God uses. We are the channels, the tools, and the instruments that God uses in order to help those that otherwise might be hopeless, addicted, um, confused, whatever the case may be. Um, you are a tree of life, the Bible says. Maybe sometimes you don't feel like a tree of life, but you are. You just got to let God work through you. You got to let God use your life. Um, and so today, I wanted to minister along these lines 
especially when it comes to uh, the area of, uh, we, we use the word evangelism. Evangelism, all that means is to be able to spread uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, to be a, a tree of life in, the, in our community, in our world, um, in, in the lives of people. And so today, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about being able to be a tree of life to others. First of all, I want to, lo- I want to look at being a tree of life for children. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, in verse 14, the Bible says, Then he, sa- uh, he said, let the, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Amen. Um, God has called us to reach children. God has called us to be a, a tree of life for children. God has called us to be a tree of life for those that may be younger in age. Because as we, uh, 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 the Bible says, don't, don't hinder children. God has not only called us to reach adults, but God has called us to reach children. Um, the Bible says here, Jesus says, do not hinder children uh, from, from coming to me. So, uh, Child evangelism is so important today. God is calling people today, His church, to be a tree of life for children. Um, Some of you brought your children today, grandkids, nephews, whoever it may be. Some of them are in the Sunday school right now. And we have Brother Jairo and Sister Stephanie being a tree of life to them. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for them. Amen. Um, in the nursery right now, we have Sister Felicia. No, she's right here. Oh, Des, and who else is in there? And Angelica. Okay, and then Angelica. Uh, they are being a, a, a tree of life to those little kids that are there right now. They're watching those children. They're not just babysitting children, but they're able to minister to those little kids. And let's thank God for them. Amen. And then we have uh, Brother Gabriel and Sister Alicia. They are the ones that God is using for uh, teenagers. And please pray for them because we know teens are a lot of work. No. Um, so God has called us to be a tree of life to children. Never think that children are not important. Never think that children are just, they're just kids. No. As a matter of fact, I believe that many of you, God called you when you were a child. And God used someone to speak to you. And some of you have done ministries or you have reached out to uh, children and because of that, you, you, were, you are and you have been a tree of life for others. Um, on July 29th, it's time for me to give an announcement here. On July 29th, here on Florin Road, there's an apartment complex that every year they call us. And please, can you come? Can you come to this apartment complex? And can you please minister to the children? And we've been there a few times. We make some hot dogs and we uh, take some prizes for the kids. Then at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to, to reach children. So on July 29th, which is a Friday evening, it's going to start at 7 p.m. We're going to go to these apartments on Florin Road. Uh, we want to invite you to be a part of that. Why? Because children are important. Amen? Yes, children are important. You don't know what that child is going to be one day because of your ministry, because of you, what you did. Um, and, and it's so important that we become that tree of life for others. And maybe some of you have never been to an outreach, a, a time of evangelism. I want to invite you to be a part of that. And it's going to be a time that we're just going to minister to the children, uh, have a fun time with them, but it also gives us an opportunity to minister to those that are there. 
And so today, uh, uh, today I just want to talk about that. I want to talk about that God has called us to be a tree of life to others. And specifically to children. God has called us to be a tree of life for children. Um, because many times when a child gets saved, usually their, ch their parents many times will come. Because the child gave their life to Christ. They came to a church. They heard a message. Many times the parents will follow. Not always, but many times. And so God has called us to be a tree of life for children, to evangelize, to be able to go and reach those that may be outside these four walls and let them know about the, the, love, of, the love of God and the hope of God. Uh, number two, God has called us to reach adults. In the book of John chapter 4 and verse 7, The Bible says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? So here now Jesus, uh, in the beginning he said, D don't stop the children from coming to me. Now he's talking to an adult, a woman here. Um, and we know that n adults come with all kinds of issues and problems. And challenges but God has called us to reach the lost reach those that may be uh, um, uh, looking for answers in their lives God has called us to be a tree of life for those that are broken-hearted for those that may be lonely for those that may be confused for those that may be looking for answers in life they may be lost and so God has called us to be a tree of life to someone that uh, may be in that predicament. And so uh, how is that going to happen? All you have to do is allow yourself to be an instrument. Allow yourself to be a tool in the hands of God. Allow yourself to be that person that God can use, a channel in the hands of God. And God will do the rest because there are so many people outside these walls that need help. They need God. And here in this passage of Scripture, Jesus is dealing with this woman that had a lot of issues in her life. She had a lot of brokenness in her life. And she needed someone to minister to her. And so God wants you to be a tree of life to someone. To someone. You're the answer to help somebody else. Because God lives in you, there's, there's life in you. Because God lives in you, God is able to bring hope to someone. God is able to impact someone's life. And so here, the Bible is telling us that um, God has called us to reach others and to be a, a, a tree of life to someone else. Uh, many times we look at people and they seem fine, and they may seem like everything's good on the outside, and, you know, on the outside they look okay, but inwardly there's, there's something that uh, may be an emptiness, uh, something that they need help in. And so uh, um, God is able to use our lives to help that person, to be a tree of life to someone else. You know, as I was reading this passage of Scripture, and I was thinking about this passage of Scripture, um, we think about being a tree of life. It's like, okay, Lord, I don't, whatever, tree of life. But no, it is so amazing and so powerful that someone's life can change because of you and me. Um, it is so powerful that God is able to do something in our lives because someone brought life to you or you brought life to someone else because you allowed God to uh, be a, use you as a channel or an instrument in someone's life. The Bible calls us to be a tree of life for children, for adults. Um, 
as you serve God, as you give your life to Jesus, make this a priority in your life. Make this a goal in your life. Make this something that you say, God, let me be that tree of life to someone else. Today we're here, and I think someone did that for us. There was someone that became that tree to us, and that's why we're here today. And now God wants you to do the same for someone else. Uh, many years ago, I remember a friend of mine that I hadn't, hadn't seen, him, seen him in over 20 years, and he showed up here in Sacramento, and I was able to minister to him. He came to our church. He got saved. He got saved at our church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And um, I said, look, he was all excited. He said, man, God is so good. I go, look, now that you're saved, God wants you to do the same. What God has given you, God wants you to pass it on to someone else. God wants you to pass it on to someone else. And, and that is so important. Um, our churches, this church here, we need, we need to be able to uh, uh, seek God uh, to use our lives in that manner and in, the, in that way. I, I want to be transparent with you. And I want to be real with you. Um, I think, you know, many times we focus maybe on the wrong things as a church. Instead of focusing on growing the church with the lost, um, with people that have never met Jesus, that don't know anything about God, God wants you to be that tree of life for that person. Um, many, many years ago, we had a meeting here for all the pastors, and there was a very famous pastor that came to preach at this pastor's meeting here in Sacramento. There was about maybe 300 pastors there from the area of Sacramento. Uh, the goal of those meetings is to come together so that we can reach the city of Sacramento, the county of Sacramento, uh, because there's a lot of, a lot of, there's not enough churches to house the people that are, don't know God in Sacramento. And, and this pastor came from San Francisco and he came from San Francisco. He's an author. He comes out on television many times. And the message he preached was, when's the last time you went fishing? I said, it's been a long time. I don't really fish. Um, but he wasn't talking about that. His message was about fishing for those that are lost, Amen. for those that don't know God. And Why? Because you're, you're a tree of life. God has called you to bring hope. God has called you to bring life to someone else. God has called you to uh, impact someone else's life. God has called us to reach those that, may, that are lost. To be a tree of life for someone else. That is what God has called us to do. We didn't go to Tijuana and Ensenada to enjoy the, the food there at that restaurant. That is, they had the, one of the best enchiladas that we ever had. It was really good. Uh, and then we just walked outside and they had um, a shrimp cocktail, but it wasn't only shrimp. They had, they had, they had uh, octopus, and they had a big old combination. I mean, it was really good. We didn't go for that. We ate it, but we didn't go for that. We went to make an impact in someone's life. As I was going over this message, I thought about some of you here today. God showed me your face. I was writing this message. And God said to me to tell you that you're a tree of life. Amen. Better not fall right here. God told me to tell you that you're a tree of life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
God told me to tell you to become that instrument, that tool in the hands of God. You may feel like, I can't do it. You're absolutely right. You can't do it. God can do it. Many times we think that we're going to do it. No, not you. It's God in us that does it. He has the resources. He has the power, the strength, the spirit. He's the one that gives life. He comes joy, peace, uh, hope. He's the one that gives it all. All that God is looking for is tools. People that say, God, here's my life. Use it. So God has called us to bring, reach the children. God has called us to reach adults. And God has called, called us to reach the elderly. <coughs> In the book of Hebrews 9.27, it says, And as it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the, the, the judgment. There's many, to, many, many people today very close to death. Rest homes are full of people that have been forgotten. Rest homes are full of people that sometimes don't get a visit. Rest homes are full of people that have been abandoned. And we have the answer. We are the tree of life. There's people today in rest, in rest homes, it's not all elderly. In rest homes, there's people that are sick in their bodies and they can't take care of themselves and they need someone to meet their needs, to help them. And so in many rest homes today, there's a lot of people that they're, they're not all elderly, some are just sick. And many times those people are forgotten and uh, they're abandoned. Uh, they're unvisited, but God has called us, the church, to evangelize them, to reach them. We share the good news with them. We share life with them. So God has called us to be a tree of life for others. God has called us to be a tree of life to all, all the ages, whether there be children, whether there be adults or elderly or sick sick in their bodies, uh, you know, at the last minute, they're, ju they're just waiting for someone to reach them. You know, I've said this story before, but for those that haven't heard it, and for those that have heard it, you probably, this is your 10th time, it's okay, but I'm going to share it again. When we were in Texas, me and my wife were uh, passing out flyers, we were evangelizing, going door to door. What is evangelism? This is what evangelism is. I don't have a piece of paper with me, but... Um, Let's say this. With, oh, I have a piece of paper right here. What's evangelism? Here's my flyer. Knock on the door. Hi, I'm from Legacy Church. We'd like to give you an invitation uh, to our church. We want to let you know that God loves you, God cares about you, and that God has a plan for you. Whatever you want to say, right? And the person takes the flyer, either throws it away. We, we had many of those. Or they don't open the door. They say, we don't want any. Go away. And then we have other people that actually open the door. And they say, come on in. Now what do you do? What do you do once they come in? Me and my wife, we were... Uh, um, oh, we went to this house in Texas one time. That the lady allowed us to come into her house. And she said, um, can you pray for me? Sure, we can pray for you. What do you want prayer for? She said, I'm sick, and I need God. So, okay, let's pray for you. And we prayed for her, and God, um, we didn't even know what, we just prayed for her. God, we pray for this lady here. God, that you would save her, God. And God, that you would just uh, heal her, and we asked her to... Pray with us. You want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart? And she said, yes. Uh, and she uh, said, okay, say this prayer. And she says, well, do you mean it? Do you want Jesus? Yes. So we led her to the Lord, and she got saved. Yes, amen. <laughs> About a, two months later, we went back to that same neighborhood, and we knocked on the door. And she didn't answer the door. It was her daughter. 
And her daughter said, you guys are the ones that prayed for my mom. Yeah. See, she died a few weeks after you guys prayed for her. Amen. She was waiting for us. Amen. We led her to the Lord right before she died. We prayed with her right before she died. Did we know that? Absolutely not. Um, there's been many, many times that God has called us to evangelize, but it's something most churches have lost. Corporately, I'm not here to make anybody feel bad or anything like that. Corporately, it's a handful. Um, but you're a tree of life. When we were in another place, me and my wife were preaching at this apartment complex, and it was just me and my wife, and my daughter Amanda was maybe about two years old, and she was in a stroller, and we were preaching there. It was some big apartment complex projects. Here in California, we don't have projects. They're nice, beautiful apartments. They look like malls. Texas, they look like projects. They're like projects. All brick, they look like a prison. And I was, we would begin to preach. And this man came to me. He said, you better not preach here. Because if you preach here, I'm going to come back. I'm going to tear down all your equipment. You, you guys get out of here. Because we're having a party and we don't want to hear your garbage. I said, Jesus, help us, Lord. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? You want me to leave? You got to give me a sign. If you want me to leave, I'll leave, Lord. He said, I had my wife and daughter. I said, okay. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I said, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask this lady if I can plug into her apartment. If she says no, that means that that's a sign for us to leave. And if she says yes, that's a sign for us to stay. And I said, Lord, let, us not, let her not help give us an opportunity to put our extension cord there. And she said, you can spend all the time you want. I said, oh, my gosh. And so I said, okay, let's preach. Got the mic and started preaching. I want to let you know that Jesus loves you. And that if you're in your house, God cares about you. And God wants to save you. And here comes that guy again. People started coming out of their houses. They wanted to hear the gospel. And the guy came up to me. And I said, what's up, man? And he gave me a hug. He said, yes, amen. He said, you keep on preaching, brother. Our streets are, have people that are so broken, so lost. Um, teenagers have been kicked out of their homes. Um, people that have so many needs in their lives. One time we were, well, what time is it? Um, a few months ago, a few a couple of years ago, we were just passing out flyers here. And same thing. People need God. We're the tree of life. We are the tree of life. And it happens all the time. But I want to let you know that it doesn't always happen in the area of corporate evangelism. It's just you allowing your life to be used wherever you go. Whether you're at home, at work, in the streets, at a store, whatever it is. You become the tree of life. The tree of life. I got saved in 1984. I got saved in 1984. 
the, one of the persons that led me to the Lord, I was in a program called Teen Challenge in San Francisco. The person that led me to the Lord at that time, was his name was Dennis Whitman. He's gone on to be with the Lord. Dennis Whitman was in prison in, in San Quentin when he received God. There's a book about him, Changed the Lives of San Quentin. He killed his brother while he was on PCP. He thought he was crushing pineapples, and it was actually his brother's head. He killed his brother. And when he went to prison, he hated himself, could not forgive himself. He couldn't forgive himself. Until there was a man that became a tree of life to him. And began to tell him about God and change his life. He gave his life to Jesus, became uh, a counselor at the Teen Challenge Centers in Northern California. He has helped not hundreds, but thousands of men turn their lives around. But he became a tree of life. Someone was a tree of life to him, then he became a tree of life for someone else. Um, it's not about church. Church is good. We come to church. We enjoy church. It doesn't stop here. This is where we just come and fellowship, hear the word of God, we're challenged, and we enjoy each other's company, and we worship. But it's a lot more than that. You are a tree of life. God has called you to be a tree of life. Let's stand to our feet today. What I, what I want to do today, um, I spoke this message, I, I, you know, I preached this message, very simple, yet very, very powerful. Um, what I want to do right now, I want to pray for some of you. I, I want to pray for some of you that you want God to use your life to help someone else. You want God to use your life. Some of you have been through some hard things in life. You've experienced some hardships. You've experienced some challenges. And God wants to use those things to encourage someone else. You might be a young person. My wife came when she was 13 years old. 13 years old. She was 13 when she came to God. She came from a broken home, a uh, broken family. Her mother was on drugs, alcohol, and God used all that to turn it around. She became, she's, she's been a tree of life for many years. Um... Today, God wants you to be a tree of life for others. God wants to turn around anything you, that you've been through in your life. He, want, he wants to turn it around and use you. You can help others. Look at my, the guy that was helping me in, in San Francisco. He killed his brother. God turned it around. God turned it around. He became a tree of life for hundreds and even thousands of men. Um, don't ever 